Hello, welcome to this new lecture of Math S401 Dynamic Optimization. Today we're going to extend our theory of dynamic optimization towards the stochastic setting. So, so far we have always talked about the setting without any uncertainty. So now we're going to see what happens if we add noise or stochastics or uncertainty in this uh, framework. And we will show that actually nothing much changes. We can again define a Bellman equation, again we can define a Bellman contraction mapping and the fixed point will coincide with the solution to the infinite horizon optimization problem. So let's go to the whiteboard. So recall that the infinite horizon dynamic optimization problem that we discussed so far can be written like this. So we have a sum from t0 to infinity of f x t a t times beta to the power t subject to some conditions and these conditions were that a t was feasible given x t we had the law of motion x t plus 1 was equal to a function r of x t and a t and then x 0 the initial state was given Okay, so this is our problem that we want to find a sequence of a's, a0, a1, and so on, that maximizes this infinite sum subject to these constraints. So this is a deterministic setting, and what do I mean by deterministic is that once I know xt, and once I know at, then xt plus 1, the state in the next period, uh, is fixed, right? There's no uncertainty, there's no stochastics here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change uh, this here. Okay, so here is going to be the part of the model where we're going to add uncertainty. So we're going to have to change this R function and we're going to uh, change it by what we call a uh, Markov kernel. Kernel, right? So Markov kernel. And what's this? Well, this is an object. Let me write it down as Q. So it's going to depend on the state today and the action today. Okay, so it's going to depend on XT and AT. And then the second argument is going to be a set. Let me call the set B, and this is going to be a subset of uh, states. Okay, and what's this object? Well, this is a number between zero and one, and this is giving the probability that xt plus 1, so the state tomorrow, is in B, given the state today being xt, and the action today being at. Okay? So that's what uh, we call a Markov kernel. It has as inputs the state today, the action today, and the set B, and it gives you the probability that tomorrow I will be in B, given that today I'm at state XT and take action AT. Okay, and this is a number between uh, zero and one because it's a probability. Okay, so this object has to satisfy some uh, measure theoretic properties, which I will not discuss in more detail, but I hope the intuition is clear that we can define uh, such kind of object and uh, try to work with it. Okay, so what's going to happen? This is going to change, right? So now we have some probability. So we're going to start with the state today, x0, and we're going to take an action a0 in gamma of x0, right? And gamma is a set of feasible states, so this feasibility constraint doesn't change. And now instead of this producing a deterministic state tomorrow. Now we're going to use draw a state tomorrow with some probability, right? So this is a distribution of possible states tomorrow, and we're going to draw one of them, right? So the stochastic process is going to generate a draw according to Q. Once I have x1, then I'm going to take a, an action in gamma x1. Then again, this probability distribution is going to kick in. Now, given x1 and a1, it's going to produce a state x0. 
state x2, I'm going to take an action a2 according to q again, given x2 and a2, it's going to produce a state x3, going to take an action a3 and so on. Okay, so this is the process now, which is now stochastic, right? Because each time I'm generating a new state, this occurs with certain probability distribution. Okay, so that's uh, the process that we are going to look at. So we're going to have to work with expectations here, or uh, measure theoretic expectations. So let me take a function f, any function that I can think of, and assume that it takes a state and it takes an action and produces a real number, similar to this f here, right? So uh, that's here. And say that x is a state today, take it x0, a0 is the action today, and I would like to compute the expected value of f x1 and then an action, take any action, for example, a1. Okay, so what's the expected value of f x1, a1, given x0, a0, according to this uh, q here? And if you want to take the expectation, so we can write this as the expectation of f x1, a1, conditional on state today being x0 and the action being a0, well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take the integral over all possible states x1. Okay, so I'm going to have to take the integral over x of f x1, a1, and then I'm going to have to weight it by this uh, probability distribution here. So this is q x0, a0, and then I'm going to integrate over x, so this is d x1. Okay, so maybe I can write it because this is uh, very narrow, I can write it out in full. So the probability of x0, a0, and then dx1, and then f times f x1, a1. So here the d is like a small neighborhood around x1, right? So this is like a subset of uh, states, right? So I'm summing, bas basically I'm summing if x1, if x would be a discrete set, basically what I'm doing here is I'm summing over all x1s, right? This is where the integral uh, comes from. And this x1 is the same as this uh, x1 here. So I will write expectations in uh, this way. Okay. So, so far we have seen how the stochastic process uh, looks like according to this Markov kernel. So by the way, this is called a Markov kernel because what's going to happen tomorrow, right, only depends on the state today and the action today, right? It doesn't depend on state uh, two days ago or three days ago or uh, n days ago. If I know the state today and the action today, then I know everything about the stochastic process, right? So this is why it's called uh, Markov. All right, so, so far I have been able to translate into this to stochastic process. I still need to figure out how to write this uh, sum here, right? And basically what I want to write is not the sum now of f because f is not deterministic anymore. It's now something random. So I would like to uh, write down the sum of the expectations or the expectation of the sum, which is uh, normally equivalent. Okay. So this is a bit problematic, and let me uh, maybe say how it is problematic, right? So in the deterministic framework, what we were trying to find was the sequence a0, a1, a2, and so on. And every time you say, okay, this sequence is a feasible part, right? If you can guarantee that uh, xt plus 1 is equal to r xt at, right, and at plus 1 is in gamma of xt plus 1, right? So recall from the deterministic framework what we said is that basically here, this maximization problem, right, if you look at these constraints, it's over all possible feasible parts of A, okay? However, in the stochastic process, it's very, uh, it's impossible to do this, right, because I want to take an at plus 1 from gamma xt plus 1, but I have no idea what the xt plus 1 is going to be in this process, right? Because all the x's are stochastic. 
So in some sense, we cannot look at the set of all possible sequences of A because we are not sure that they're going to be feasible given what, axis, what the axes are going to be because they are randomly generated. So instead of looking for feasible paths, we're going to look at feasible uh, policy functions, right? And so remember what was a policy function? A policy function was some function gamma from x to a. Okay, so for every state, it specifies what action to take. And of course, gamma of x has to be in, has to be feasible, so it has to be in the uh, correspondence gamma of x. Okay, so it has to satisfy uh, this constraint. And we can basically, instead of using these sequences of A, we can work with policy functions gamma. So we're going to optimize, optimize with respect to choice of gamma. Okay, so this is going to be our choice of uh, the maximizer. And so what's the idea? The idea is that at period zero, I pick a gamma. And then for forever, I'm going to stick with the gamma. So if at some state, I observe that the state today is xt, well, the action I'm going to take is going to be gamma of xt. Then randomly, a new state is generated. Well, if this new state is xt plus one, then I'm going to take action gamma xt plus one. All right, so this will guarantee that at every period, uh, I'm going to be able to take the action uh, that's feasible. Okay, so the sequence of actions now will be random and will be equal to gamma x0, gamma x1, gamma x2, and so on. Okay, so this is going to be the sequence, sequence of actions that are going to be taken. And because x1, x2, and so on are random, right? They're generated by uh, the previous states and actions. This is also going to be random, right? This is going to be a random sequence of actions. So let's now try to work out what, given the gamma that I've chosen, what's going to be the expected infinite sum of the instantaneous utility. Okay, so for example, what is going to be f of state tomorrow? Let's call it x1. When I'm picking, choosing a policy function gamma, then I'm going to take action gamma of x1. Right, so this is the instantaneous pay of tomorrow. I'm going to have to discount it. And then, of course, I'm going to have to take the expectation because x1 is going to be random. Okay, so, so what's this value? Well, this value, right, this is going to be the integral over all x's. And here I'm going to go over x1 of beta of q of x0 what action am I, am I going to take at state zero? It's going to be gamma x zero, right? And then I'm going to have dx one of f x one. I'm going to take action gamma x one. Okay, so this is going to be the expected value of beta times f at state x one. Okay. Now let's now look to two periods e ahead, right? So I'm going to have to look at the expectation of beta squared, my instantaneous payoff two periods ahead. So this is x2, state in period two, times gamma x2. Now two periods ahead, but first I'm gonna go from state x0, gamma x0 to state x1. And then I'm gonna have to go from state x1, gamma x1 to state x2. Okay, so I'm gonna have to invoke this q twice, once to go from state zero to state one, and then from state one to uh, state two. So this is going to be an integral for x. Uh, let me take the beta, maybe the beta squared can go outside of the expectation, All right? So that's easy. I already am rid of this one. So the probability from x zero gamma x zero to go to dx1 and then once I'm at state x1 I have to take the other expectation of q of x1 gamma x1 
the state that the action that I'm going to stake for every x1, dx2, and then f x2 gamma x2. Okay, so this is going to be the expectation two periods in the future, right? So I have a double integral here. Uh, that's how it's in mathematics, okay? And then, in general, if I have n periods ahead, how do this, does this look like? Well, I have beta t and then f at state xt, gamma xt. Well, I'm going to have to go from x state x0 to state x1, from state x1 to state x2, and so on and so on. So I have a whole sequence of integrals, right? So from q, x0 gamma, x0 dx1, and then from q, x1 gamma, x1 dx2 and so on and then have an integral from q xt minus 1 gamma xt minus 1 dxt and then f xt gamma xt okay so this is the i have t integrals one after the other and then finally the payoff function Okay, so if I now look at the expected value of the sum from uh, 0 to t of beta to the power t of f xt gamma xt, well I can write this as the sum from 0 to t of beta to the power t of the expectation of f xt gamma xt and then for every one of these I can just substitute out the integrals right so this is basically my objective function t periods in the future okay this is this is uh, what I'm gonna look at and let me write this as u n for gamma okay so I'm using the rule the policy function gamma and maybe not uh, n right but let me use big t right so for t periods so this is a finite sum of expectations so in principle i can uh, work it out this value for a given gamma okay if i plug in a given gamma here i just specify a function that goes from a state to an action that's feasible for every action i can plug it in here in principle i can work out all these expectations and what i will get in the end will be a number in r okay and now the question is, if I look at the infinite horizon, right? So if I take the limit from t going to infinity of ut for a given rule gamma, is this still a number, right? So does this sequence here converge? That's, that's the first question. If it does, we can write this as u infinite of gamma. And then I would like to find the gamma that maximizes this okay that's what i want to do and here i go over all policy functions x to a such that gamma x is in big gamma of x okay so all the policy functions that are good so i'm going to maximize this limiting value here for t going to infinity of the sum expected uh, value expected objective function for using the policy function gamma what's the best policy function to use in order to maximize this infinite uh, sum so this is going to be my problem that I would like to solve okay so I'm looking for the policy function that maximizes the infinite horizon expected objective function okay so we're going to look at this maximization problem and we're going to relate it to a Bellman equation. So remember for the deterministic case, uh, our Bellman equation was the following. So we had V of X was equal to max for all possible actions. And I'm using gamma all the time. Um, 
but I think in the deterministic case I use g. Right, so gamma was the optimal policy, right, g was the... Okay, so everywhere where I put gamma, I put a big G for consensus, consistency of notation, right? So I pick an action in G of x to maximize fx a plus beta v, and then I had the state tomorrow, which was r x a. Okay, and I would like to change this such that I can take into account the stochastic part, right? So in particular, this r here is problematic because it doesn't exist when you go to stochastic setting. So now I'm going to change it in the following, right? So I'm going again, take the maximum of all actions that are feasible given the state x of fxa. So when x is a state, x is not stochastic, right? It's the state tomorrow that's stochastic. So I'm going to have to change something here. And instead of taking v, v of the state tomorrow, I'm going to take the expected value of v tomorrow. So I'm going to have to take the integral over x of the kernel xa. Okay, so this is the state, this is the action of the state tomorrow. So let me call this x tilde and then of v of x tilde. Okay, so otherwise you can also write this as beta and then the expected value of v x tomorrow given the state today and the action today. Okay, so the expected value. That's uh, going to be our Bellman equation. And corresponding to this, we have a Bellman operator, which looks very similar. So Tv of x is equal to the maximum of all possible actions that are feasible of the payoff today plus the expected value tomorrow so the integral of q x a d x tilde of v x tilde okay so that's the bellman operator okay so what are we going to do we're going to going to impose several conditions on the structure of the problem, similar as what we have done in the deterministic framework. And given these conditions, I'm going to show that this here is a contraction mapping. Okay, so it will have a fixed point. And of course, the fixed point here will satisfy this Bellman equation. And then I'm going to show that the value of the Bellman equation at the state x maximizes this problem, right? Satisfies is equal to this maximum. So this is going to be equal to fvx0, right? So here x0 is the initial states that's uh, given. So I'm going to show that v of x0 is equal to the maximum of this uh, problem over all policy functions. And then I'm also going to show that by solving this problem, we can generate a policy function right, that determines for every state x the optimal action to take, right, by solving this problem. And I'm basically also going to show that v of x0 is equal to u infinite of gamma star of this policy function, right? So if I generate this policy function and use this in here, then I will actually reach the maximum value, okay? So you can solve this infinite horizon stochastic optimization problem by solving this Bellman uh, operator by, by finding the fixed point of the Bellman operator and then uh, generating the policy function that corresponds to this. Simply uh, very similar to the deterministic framework. So in order to do this I'm going to, going to impose uh, some restrictions. So the first is going to be similar as before that f instantaneous payoff function x times a to r is continuous. Okay, the second one was of course that beta was between 0 and strictly less than 1. Okay, so these are standard assumptions. The third one was that the feasibility correspondence is upper hemicontinuous and lower hemicontinuous and also non-empty of course. 
should be feasible to take an action for every state. Okay, so that's null empty. So these are standard conditions, and then we had a few other conditions. Uh, remember that placed some boundedness on on this function and also on the phi function, right? So remember we had a function phi that went from x to r plus plus, okay? And this phi is going to be used to determine the vector space on which we will find our fixed point. So as before, we're going to define this kind of function phi, and we're going to impose not two now, but three conditions. So the first condition is the same as in the deterministic uh, case. So if you remember, this was that the best action to take in g of x, okay, so for there should exist a number m such that for all states, if I maximize the absolute value of fx a, then this should be lower than some number m times phi of x. Okay. This was the same uh, condition as in the deterministic uh, case. So for the second condition, if you remember the deterministic case, we had something like this, that beta times maximum of a in g of x of r x a and then putting this in the phi function was less or equal to theta of phi x right so phi of the state tomorrow the highest value of phi for a given state tomorrow is less or equal to theta times phi of the state today okay and we said that for all there should exist a theta between 0 and 1 such that for all x and x, this condition was satisfied. Now, we cannot use this condition anymore because r here now doesn't exist in stochastic framework. So instead of r, we're going to again use or substitute it by the expected value. Okay, so we're going to assume that beta of the maximum of a and g of x, and now of the expected value of phi tomorrow, so q uh, x a d x tilde, right? This is the state tomorrow of phi x tilde is less or equal to theta times phi x. Okay, so basically here we're taking the expected value of phi x phi of x tomorrow given x state today and the action today. Okay. And you're going to maximize this with respect to a. If you multiply this by beta, then it should be less or equal to theta times phi of the x of the state today. So this is just a translation of uh, this condition to uh, stochastic framework. And then the third condition is a bit of a technical condition. So it requires that if f is a function from x to r, and f is in c phi, right? So it's continuous and it's bounded in the phi norm. Then for all a, for all actions in a, if I would take the expected value of f x tomorrow, right? So this is f x a dx tilde f x tilde, right? So this is the expected value of fx tomorrow. Given x and a, right? We assume that this is that this is a continuous function in x. Okay, so this is this depends on x and a. Well, so it's a function of r, x, and a. So for every a, we assume that this is a continuous function of x. Okay, so that's uh, the third condition, and this is sometimes called the Feller condition. So I made a small mistake. This is not only continuous in x, but continuous in x times a, right? So it's continuous function of both x and a. So in some sense, changing a here and changing x here will change this uh, probability. If we only do this for a small amount, then this will not change. Uh, the expectation by a lot. This is what it uh, requires. 
So any framework f beta g that satisfies these conditions and then satisfies these one, two, and properties three, we're going to say that this problem is a regular problem. Okay? Just because I don't want to copy everything every time that I call a problem regular, I'm just going to give it a name. And then we have the first result, and this result is going to the fixed point property of the uh, Bellman operator. So in particular, we have a mapping T, T is a Bellman, Bellman operator that I have defined uh, previously. So the theorem says that T goes from C phi to C phi, so it takes continuous functions bounded in the phi norm to continuous functions bounded in the phi norm. And T is a contraction mapping. Okay, so that's what we're going to uh, demonstrate in this theorem. So, first of all, remember TV of the state X was equal to maximum A in G of X of F XA plus beta. And then I had this integral over x of f q x a v x tilde of v x tilde. Okay. So first of all, by the uh, third property, I know that this is a continuous function of x and a. Okay. So this was this. Uh, Third property here, because f is in C phi, right? That's by assumption, right? V is in uh, C phi. I know that this is a continuous function. Okay, so this is here is continuous. I know that this is continuous, right? So this entire objective function is continuous. G is upper and lower hemi continuous. I'm maximizing a continuous function subject to an upper and lower hemi continuous. Uh, correspondence, so I know that the maximum value here is going to be continuous, right? So this shows that T goes takes any function that's bounded in the phi norm to a continuous function. So the only thing that we need to show in order for to, in order to show that we go from C phi to C phi, the only thing that we need to show is that this is bounded in the phi norm, okay? Because it's already continuous because by Burgess maximization theorem. Okay, so let's take the absolute value of the left hand side. Well then this this becomes the absolute value the, mac, the absolute value of the maximum which is less or equal to the maximum of the absolute values and then this will become the absolute value of this thing here right, that the absolute value of a sum is lower than the sum of the absolute values, and then I can take the maximum for each side, and it will uh, even go up more, okay? So this is less or equal to maximum of a and g of x of the absolute value of f x a plus, I can probably bring beta up front because it's fixed, and then maximum a in g of x of this integral. So this would be the absolute value of this integral, but I then can bring the absolute value inside the integral, right? So again, it's possible that I will increase the right-hand side. And then q is non-negative, right? So this becomes q x a v x tilde, and then the absolute value of v x tilde. Right, so basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing the absolute value inside. Okay, and by doing so, I can only increase uh, the right-hand side here. Okay. Now, V is bounded in the phi norm. Right, so I assume that V is in C of phi. So I know here that the absolute value here is less or equal to the norm of V times phi x. Okay, and if I take the absolute value, this, because this is uh, strictly positive, I know that this is less or equal to max a in g of x of f 
x a plus beta max a in g of x of q x a dx tilde should be an x tilde here, right, of the norm of v, but this is just a fixed number, so I can bring it outside of the maximization. So let me multiply it with beta, right, and then what I have left is here phi of x tilde. And now I can use my properties 1 and 2, so I know that this is bounded by some number m times phi of x, and then I have beta times the phi norm of v, and then this here by the property 2, I know that this is less or equal to uh, theta over b, right? Basically I have beta times times this, so this cancels out, and then I have phi of, phi of x. Okay, so basically this, this uses this inequality uh, here. Okay, so this is going to be equal to m plus the norm of v uh, times theta times phi of x. So if I compute tv, absolute value of tv of x divided by phi of x, I know that this is less or equal to m plus v phi x, and this is independent of x. Okay, so I know that the sub here, sub x and x will also be bounded by this here. So I know that dv is bounded in the phi norm. So t goes from c phi to uh, c phi. Okay, so that's the first part of the proof that t is indeed an operator from this set uh, to this set. I still need to show that it's a contraction mapping. So the second part, I will prove as we normally do it, I will verify Blackwell's uh, conditions. All right, so for A, we have to show monotonicity. So if V is less or equal to W, then I need to show that TV is less or equal to TW. Well, that's not overly difficult. So TV of X is equal to the maximum of A in G of X of F X A plus beta and then the integral of q x a dx tilde dx tilde and then v is less or equal to w but here i'm basically so basically what is this this is the weighted sum of the v's right over all the x's so If e is smaller than w, then the weighted sum of the v's will be small or equal to the same weighted sum of the w's. So I know that this is less or equal to fxa plus beta qxa dx tilde of wx tilde. Okay, and this last one, the latter one, is equal to tw of x by definition. Okay, so v smaller than w implies t of v is smaller or equal to t of w. For the second property, this was additivity, I need to show that t v plus a phi was less or equal to t v plus, if I recall well, theta a phi for some theta smaller than 1. Okay? basically theta in 0, 1. Okay, so this was my additivity condition. So let's check this. Okay, so I have T V plus A phi. This evaluated at some state X. This is equal to the maximum of A and G of X of F X A plus beta. And now I have to take the integral of q x a dx tilde. And now instead of v, I have v plus a phi. Okay, so I have v of x tilde plus a phi of x tilde. Okay, instead of v, I have this new function here. 
Okay, so this is less or equal to the maximum of a and g of x of f x a plus beta. So here I have the expectation. Here I have a sum, so I can expand the sum, and then I have the sum of the integrals. So first of all, I have q x a d x tilde v x tilde, right? And then split up the maximum with respect to the sum. So this is plus max a and g of x beta the integral of q x a dx tilde. And then I have a phi x tilde. Okay. This here, this is equal to tv x by definition and in here the last one I can again use property 2 right so this is going to be smaller than theta times a can be brought outside of the uh, expectation this is just a fixed number and then phi x okay so this again uses uh, the second uh, property here okay so the proof of the fact that it's a contraction mapping and it goes from uh, C phi to C phi is very similar as for the deterministic case, except that the notation is much more annoying because you have to take the uh, integral uh, a lot of times. Also, the second part will be very similar to the proof that you have seen in the deterministic case, but again, the notation will be much, much uh, heavier because we have to take the expectations, iterated expectations over and over again. Okay, so maybe first we should take a small break. Oh, welcome back. So where were we? Well, we had, we were maximizing over policy functions. Okay, so this is a function that associates with every state the action that you need to take. So gamma of x is in g of x. Okay, so it's feasible. That's a condition. And you were looking at u infinity of gamma, which was the limit from t going to infinity of ut of gamma, okay, and ut of gamma was the sum from t0 to big T of beta to the power t of the expectation of f xt at. Okay, and you can say conditional on uh, x0. Okay, so, but x0 is fixed, so we can sometimes, I will leave out the conditional uh, part here. But it should be noticed that this is conditional on the initial state, right? The initial state is given. So our first uh, problem will be to actually show that this limit here exists for a given policy function. Okay, so this is what we want to show. We want to show that this limit here is actually a number, right? The sequence UTs will converge to a number. And uh, we will do this by showing that this is a Cauchy sequence, as we have done in the deterministic case. But first, let us work out a little bit, right? We, first of all, we're going to somehow bound the teeth term in this expansion. Okay, so we had that ut of gamma was equal to the sum. So let's take the teeth term here and, and let's see what it looks like. Right, so it's beta to the power t of the expectation of f x t a t given x uh, zero. Okay, and if you expand this expectation here, then you have a sequence of uh, integrals. Right, so this is equal to beta to the power t, and then q x zero gamma x zero. This should be gamma xt, right? So I'm using the policy uh, function gamma. Okay, so it looks like this. x0 dx1, and then the integral 
from state two from state x1 gamma x1 to state two x2 and so on so i have t of these nested integrals q xt minus one gamma xt minus one dxt and then i have f xt gamma xt okay so i have t nested integrals and then finally my my instantaneous uh, payoff function so i'm going to bound this expression and i'm going to work from the inside out to the outside right so i'm first i'm going to take the inner integral i'm going to bound it then i'm going to add an integral bound it again and add an integral bound it again and so on and so on okay so let's first look at the inner integral here well that's equal to q xt minus 1 gamma xt minus 1 dxt of f xt gamma xt okay and this is not negative so i know this is less or equal to x of q xt minus 1 gamma xt minus 1 dxt of the absolute value of f xt comma xt okay so here i just replaced the absolute value now i'm going to use property one so i know that this is bounded here because gamma is just a feasible action i know that this is less or equal to x q of xt minus one gamma xt minus one dxt m phi xt okay and i'm i can bring m which is a fixed number i can bring it to the front and now i'm using property two again because gamma is just a feasible action so if i take the maximum then i know that this is bounded by here i'm gonna keep my m I'm going to have a theta, I'm going to have to divide it by beta, and then I'm going to have phi xt minus 1. Okay, so that's the bound here for the innermost uh, integral is bounded by uh, this number here. So let's now take two integrals, right? Let's add an integral more. Well, and this integral is q going to be xt minus 2 gamma xt minus 2 dxt minus 1 okay and then this inner integral is bounded by this here so if i substitute it in i have m theta over beta of phi uh, xt minus 1 okay so this m theta over beta i can bring it to the front so i know that this is less or equal to m theta over beta and then again i can use the same property too right? basically i'm using this this here over and over again so i know that this then will be bounded by another theta over beta of phi xt minus uh, 2 right so basically i'm going from phi xt minus 1 to xt minus 2 multiplied by some uh, coefficient okay so this is m theta squared over beta squared of phi xt minus 2. i can take i can add another integral around this right then q xt minus 3 gamma xt minus 3 dxt minus 2 now i here have m theta squared beta squared phi xt minus 2 again this is fixed so i can bring it to the front so this will be less or equal to m theta squared over beta squared and then again using this property 2 i know that this is less than theta over beta of phi xt minus 3 okay and i can keep on adding uh so by the way this is m theta to the power of 3 over beta to the power of 3 phi xt minus 3 
So I hope you see the pattern, right? So I can keep on adding integrals one after the other. So in the end, what I will have is that e, so beta to the power t. I think this is uh, what we started with, right? We wanted to bound this thing here, which was equal to this nested integral, right? So beta to the power t of the expectations of f xt gamma xt this is going to be bounded by m and then you have theta to the power t divided by beta to the power t but i have a beta to the power t here so these cancel each other out and then phi x zero okay so that's the last one okay so now we have a bound for this teeth term in the expansion of the sum okay so remember what you wanted to do we wanted to show that this sequence here converges well what we're going to do is we're going to show that it is Cauchy right so in order to show that it's a Cauchy sequence we have to show that u n of gamma minus u m of gamma that this converges to zero for every n and m going to infinity okay terms far enough into the sequence get arbitrarily close together. Okay, so let's do this. Well, by expanding this into a sum of expectations and expanding this into a sum of expectations, so here I'm going to assume that m is bigger than n. I know that this is going to be the absolute value of the sum from t equal to n plus 1 to m of beta to the power t of the expectation of f xt gamma xt okay and the absolute value so the absolute value of a sum is less or equal to the sum of the absolute values okay so this is sum from t equal to n plus one of m of beta to the power t of um, so I didn't take the expect the absolute value here, right? But if I would take the absolute value here, what would change in this expansion? Well, here I would have the absolute value, right? But basically in step one here, I already took in, taken the absolute value. So I can delete this and just expand uh, all the way here and I will get the same bound. Okay, so this is makes my life easier. I already have the result, right? So this is less or equal to the expectation here of the absolute value of fxt gamma of xt make sure that <laughs> i have the correct bracket so this is the bracket for the absolute value this is for closing the expectation and now i can use these bounds here so this is less or equal to the sum of t equal to n plus one to m of beta to the power t and here i have um it's this bound here m theta to the power t phi x zero and i can get rid of the beta t right because there's the beta t was already included here okay so m is fixed i can bring it outside so phi x zero is also fixed i can bring it outside and then i have the sum from t equal to n plus one two m of theta to the power t and I have that this is less or equal to theta to the power n plus 1 over 1 minus uh, theta. Right? So basically I'm adding the nth part here of this infinite sum. And this infinite sum is going to be the first time divided by 1 minus uh, theta. And if n goes to infinity, well this is fixed. This is fixed because x0 is fixed. This is fixed here. Here theta is smaller than 1 so this goes to 0. So indeed I have a Cauchy sequence. So the fact that this is a Cauchy sequence shows that u infinity for some policy function gamma exists. Okay, and this is basically what we wanted to show uh, here in this result that indeed this limit for t going to infinity of this expectation is uh, well defined. All right, so let's continue with. The connection right so now we already know that we have a fixed point of our bellman operator 
So for example, let us denote this by V star, right? It's the fixed point of the Bellman operator T. And then we know that for every policy function gamma, we have the infinite uh, discounted sum of instantaneous payoffs, which we denoted by U infinity of gamma. And we would like to show that if we maximize this with respect to gamma, then we will get uh, V star at the initial state, which is uh, X zero. Okay, <clears throat> so first of all, we're going to show that V star of x0 is greater or equal to u infinity of gamma for all policy functions gamma, okay? Okay, so that's the first thing uh, that we're going to show. And the proof is also going to be very similar to the proof that we have done for the deterministic case, but now again, we're going to have to use a lot of uh, integrals, okay? So we know that V star X zero, because it's the fixed point of the Bellman operator, this is equal to the maximum over all possibilities in G of X of F X. So we're starting at X status X zero, right? Of A plus beta, and then the integral of Q X zero A DX tilde Q, let me call x tilde x1, okay, because we're going to go over time, and then v x1, okay, I can name this x tilde, I can call it x1, I can call it uh, square, I can call it triangle, whatever I want, let me just call it x1 in this case. Okay, so here I'm taking the maximum, but I also know that gamma of x0 for this policy function here is in g of x by definition, so here I'm taking the maximum and this is a feasible value. Okay, so I know that this is greater or equal to fx0 gamma x0 plus beta x of q x0 gamma x0 dx1 vx1. Okay, and vx1 well, I know that this is the fixed point of the Bellman operator at state x1. So I know that this is equal to f of x0 gamma x0 plus beta x q x0 gamma x0 d x1 and then times the maximum of a and g of x1 Okay, let me put this in big brackets. Fx1 a plus beta and then the integral of xq x1 a dx2 vx2. Right, so this is an integral. Basically, you're also integrating over this, this part here, right? So this is the same as v. Okay. So here I'm maximizing over a but I know that gamma of x1 is also in g of x1. So here this maximum should be greater or equal to this value here, where I use gamma of x1 instead of a. Okay. And because I'm weighted over something, and this something is smaller, that, uh, greater or equal to, than if it would be if I use gamma, and this weight will also be greater, right? So this is greater or equal to f of x0, gamma x0, plus beta q x0 gamma x0 dx1 and then here I have f x1 gamma x1 and then now I have here beta so I can split it up in two parts right so this is beta repeating q x0 gamma x0 dx1 and then times beta times the integral of q x1 gamma x1 dx2 times vx2 okay 
and I can bring the beta here in front, I get a square here and this one disappears. Okay, so here I have a reiterated expectation two times. Um, okay, and now I have a vx2 here, I can again expand it here, I can substitute the gamma, right, and get it greater or equal to this, but then using the gamma instead of the maximum, and so on, and so on, and so on, right? So I hope that C at the end, I can iterate this further and further and further, right? So in the end, this will be greater or equal to f of x0 gamma x0 plus beta. What I have here is the expectation of fx1 gamma x1. What I will get in the next step is beta squared of the expectation of f x2 gamma x2. Then in the next iteration, I will get an additional term beta to the power 3 of the expectation of f x3 gamma x3, and so on. And if I stop after t times, the last one will be beta to the power t, the expectation of f x t gamma x t, and then I will have a remainder which will be v at x t plus 1, but at the expectation. Okay, so this is beta to the power t of the expectation of v x t plus 1. Okay, so these t first terms you can recognize as u t of gamma, okay, by definition, and then I have a remainder here. So what would happen if I let it go to infinity? Well, this here would converge to u infinity of gamma, right? I started with v star x0, and we want to show that it's greater or equal to v infinity of gamma, which is exactly here the first term if I go, let it go to infinity. So I hope that this converges to zero, right? And if this converges to zero, I'm happy because this goes to zero, this goes to this term and v star of x0 will then be greater or equal to, to this value here. Okay, so what I need to show is that this indeed uh, converges to 0. And this is what I'm going to do uh, now. So what we had was beta to the power t of the expectation of uh, v xt plus 1. Okay, so here this expectation, this is taking big T number of integrals, x0, gamma, x0, dx1, q, x1, gamma, x1, dx2, and so on, and so on, and then the inner one will be q, x t gamma x t d uh, x t plus one of v x t plus one. Okay, and we're going to bound this. We're going to do it similarly as before. First, we're going to take the inner integral, and then we're going to add integrals over and over again, and keep on bounding uh, what we have. Okay, so let's look at the inner integral. That's xt gamma xt dxt plus 1 of v xt plus 1. Uh, v is in c of phi. Okay, that's uh, by definition, right? Because t is a contraction mapping on the space. So I know that this is smaller or equal to the phi norm of v times phi of xt plus 1. Okay. So this is less or equal to the phi norm of v and then xt gamma xt uh, dxt plus 1 times phi xt plus 1. Okay, and now I can use this property 2 again because here I just have an action gamma of xt. So if I take the maximum overall gamma, I know that this is bounded by v phi over theta over beta times phi xt. 
Okay, and now I take the next integral. So I have qxt minus 1. This is going to gamma xt minus 1 dxt. And then I can add this here, v phi theta over beta phi xt. This is all fixed. I can bring it in front. So this will be less or equal to v phi theta over beta. And then again, using property 2, right? I have another theta over beta and phi xt minus 1. Okay, and I can keep on iterating over and over and over again. So in the end, what will this be? This will be less or equal to beta to the power big T. And then I have the norm of V. I will have a theta to the power, um, I think it will be T plus one, big T plus one, divided by beta T plus one, and then I will have phi of x0. Okay. So here, this is to the power t. So the exponent drops here. So here I have something fixed. This is fixed. This is fixed. If big t goes to infinity, well, because theta is smaller than 1, I know that if t goes to infinity, this converges to 0, which was exactly what I uh, wanted to show. Okay, so here at the bottom, this will go to u infinity of gamma, and this will converge to zero. So the fixed point of development operator is indeed greater or equal to every uh, possible uh, policy function here, right? So it's an upper bound of the maximization problem. The only thing that now you have to show is that uh, for some gamma, it's actually equal. Okay. And this is what we're going to do now, right? So we're going to look at the Bellman operator, Vx, uh, or the Bellman fixed point, right? Max A and G of X, Fx A. So uh, after a while you get this, uh, you know this by heart because you have written it down so many times before, right? So Q, X, A, D x tilde v x tilde. Okay, so this is a maximization problem. If v is in C phi, then this is continuous, so I can solve the continuous maximization problem. So the solution to this problem is some correspondence. So what I do is I take one solution out of this, right? Let me call it as a star, and I this will be a function of x, right? For different x's, I have different maximization problem. So let me call this gamma star of x, right? So this is the optimal policy related to this Bellman equation, right? So I solve this maximization problem. I store the solution of this uh, maximization problem, and I store it in this policy function, OK? So this is what I'm doing. So this is a well-defined policy function, because gamma star of x is in g of x for all x, OK? Why? Because it satisfies this uh, constraint. So what I want to show now finally is that v star of x is equal to u infinity of using this policy function gamma star, right? So and this is going to give you exactly what you want to do, um, <coughs> showing that uh, v star of x is reached for some policy function, in particular the one that uh, solves the Bellman equation. And because we had that v star of x was an upper bound, right, is greater or equal to u phi of gamma for all gamma, we know that it's actually the, the best one, right, so it solves the optimization problem, which is what we wanted to demonstrate. And the proof is almost identical to the, to the previous one, so I will only give a rough sketch, and then I say you can use uh, similar ways to demonstrate. So basically we will start with so this should be x0, okay, sorry, because you're starting at x0. So going to write down v of x0, well, this is maximum a and g of x of fx a plus beta qx a x0a, sorry, 
dx1 v of x1. We solve this maximization problem, but we know what the solution is, right? So the solution is going to be gamma star of x0. Okay. So I know that this is equal to f of x0 gamma star of x0 plus beta integral over x0 gamma star of x0 dx1 dx1. Okay. Now I'm going to expand this one, right, using this uh, definition fx0 gamma star of x0 plus beta xq x0 gamma star of x0 dx1. So what's this here? Well, I can already plug in the optimal solution gamma star. So I will have fx1 gamma star of x1 and then plus, let me already write it out in two periods x0 gamma x0 dx1 and then the integral so I will have a beta uh, from here so this becomes beta squared here and then I have a q x1 gamma star of x1 dx2 um, dx2 Okay, and I can continue doing this over and over again, except, so this is very similar to what we had previously, except that now we have equalities at every step and not greater or equal than signs. Okay, so after n iterations, this will be equal to, or after t iterations, this will be equal to ut of using the policy function gamma star plus beta to the power t of the expectation of uh, v xt plus 1. And now here, this expectation is generated over Q using the policy function gamma star, right? So similar as before, we can show that this converges, of course, to U infinity of gamma star. Okay. And then the proof is entirely identical. We can show that for T going to infinity, this converges to zero. And because this always holds with equality, I know that V star of X zero is equal to U infinity of uh, gamma star. So this will be reached by this policy function that solved this uh, Bellman operator or Bellman maximization problem. And I know that's bigger than any other policy function, so it uh, reaches the optimum value. Okay, so this, uh, so far we have shown that indeed we can define a Bellman operator and a Bellman uh, function that's very similar to the non-stochastic case. And under regularity assumptions, the fixed point of this Bellman equation will indeed give you the optimal solution. And the policy function that solves the Bellman equation will give you the optimal uh, policy function in this uh, stochastic case also. So thank you for watching.